Hello and welcome to a Let's Play Boulder's Gate. This will be containing Boulder's Gate 1, Boulder's Gate 2, and the expansion to that. There's uh, the Boulder's Gate expansion is included, but it's not worth mentioning. It's a very different type of expansion in nature. It adds more content to the core Boulder's Gate game. It's few extra sites, few extra quests, that sort of thing, while Baldur's Gate 2 expansion Turning Ball is a separate storyline entirely that wraps up the entire saga. So we're gonna play a single character group from the start of Baldur's Gate 1 to the end of Baldur's Gate 2 Throne Ball. This isn't the original game, the logo here for example is the Throne Ball one. It's because I'm playing the Baldur's Gate one through the engine of Baldur's Gate two because it's just appearing everywhere. There are other changes too. There aren't any storyline that sort of changes. It's pretty much Baldur's you know, as the as the game was released. But there are usability tweaks, um, ease of uh, item stacking. I don't remember what they are, but basically that sort of thing. Normally, for example, originally rings and duels did not stack even if they were identical. So we would change the intel that they can be stacked. Ammunition can be stacked to much higher stacks. It's a... You, I think that originally you could carry like 20 arrow ammunition stacks and I basically removed the limitation on those. Bottles might have been something like five bottles. It's a ease of life, a quality of life improvement. But what what the low level limitations just made you do is go back to town and back to where you were in the middle of your adventure, and there's there's really no. It causes you to travel a bit more and rest a bit more, but there's not really any gameplay changes attached to that. So I'll just I just want to carry bigger ammunition stacks with me. That sort of changes in general are what has been added to Baldur Skate and Baldur Skate 2. As far as the game uh, otherwise is it's exactly the same as it should be. Hmm. I've been a a little bit of thought, but on character we're gonna play. I'm going to play a bounty hunter. It's a specialty thief kit. The reason is because you need a thief. If you want to play in a well, you don't strictly speaking need a thief, but it's uh, one of the most important quality of life classes, and I, I, I don't intend to play a huge group with six men. I want a very fairly small core group. I mean, I might even play solo for some time in there, but like three, four guys at maximum, special situations excluding that human male bounty hunter bounty hunter specialization is basically traps it's a suckier thief it gets a thief gets 25 points per level to distribute between every thief abilities we get five points less we start with a the advantage in trap setting and what we get is basically specialty traps. Normal thief would get damage traps. We get traps that deal out damage and slow the target. Traps that hold the target at level 11. I don't think we even reached that high in both hit one. Level 16 trap erects an Otelux res resilient sphere around the target. If save fail, 
That's 21 trap mazes to target, per se. The, a lot of these abilities won't even matter in Mobile Skate 1. Here we'll be more or less a typical thief with some extra trap abilities. Um, other specialties would be more of a warrior type thief. No backstepping. If you don't intend to do backstepping, basically this is an amazing way for thief to take. You get the thief abilities plus bonus to armor class, bonus to armor, extra bonus to armor class, extra bonus to hit as you level up. Higher specialization is normal. And yep. Assassin is if you want to be a backstepping thief, come from shadows to a quick strike on the enemy. You have a higher backstep specialization or backstep damage multiplier. Normally the maximum is 5, with the assassin is 7. You're a suckier thief. You get a one-time bonus to hit and damage, and you have a you gain the ability to poison your weapon. But uh, I sort of think assassin sucks unless you really go for the backstepping thing. And it takes a long time to develop. Bounty Hunter is more of a I took it more also because I, I, I feel that's more my character. I'm not quite an assassin, but I'm certainly leaning into the evil direction quite heavily. Neutral evil. Um, yeah, the alignment system. I, I don't want to get too deep into this, it works in two axes, lawful chaos and good and evil. It's basically the center of what your character is. It doesn't fully determine, you don't have to follow it in every choice you make. But it more or less determines what your character is going to be like. It does not have actual gameplay effects, not many at least. It's just a role playing thing. It's 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 a bit more because in this world alignment is something that you it's basically known. In certain ways it matters. There is a very real evil in this game. There are lawful evils have a faction. Chaotic evils have a faction. True neutrals are sort of druidic faction. Lawful good, chaotic good. Lawful good would be basically someone who's trying to go for the good, but also has a set of core principles that he will not compromise on. A chaotic good would be someone who's who doesn't really care about the principle thing, but tries to do good no matter what that requires him to do. It's not exactly law as in law of a country, but it can be lawful evil could not doesn't mean that you have to follow the law. It's you could be for example an assassin who follows a certain set of principles. Maybe a, a set of his a set of assassins that have loyalty and follow certain principles to their sect. They might not follow the law in every any sense, but those principles that form the basic of the character, that those are things he will value and try to adhere to. Neutral evil is more mercenary. Chaotic would be doesn't give a shit about anything, no, uh, except for himself. I mean, no principles at all. Anything that benefits you, you'll be more or less willing to do it. Naturally, there are nuances there that you can have in your character, but that's more of a guiding principle. We are neutral evil, so it's very mercenary. Don't give a really give a shit about anything. Are very what benefits us and our own advancements. Primarily concerned about that. Hmm. An unscrupulous mercenary, a common thief. A double-crossing informer who betrays people to the authorities to protect and advance himself. 
a typical example of neutral evil character. We're sort of a bounty hunter mercenary type. Not really concerned about the law. And mainly do things for our own, to advance our own things. Doesn't mean we can't do good things, but the basic principle always will be to advance ourselves somewhere. In general, there can always be exceptions, but they're exactly that, they're exceptions. And the shittiest part of a Boulder Skate roleplaying game rolling your stats. It's shitty because it's totally random. It goes from stats go from 3 to 18, and anything below 9 gives you negative. So this can you can be clicking on these random rerolls for a long time before you get anything even half decent. It does mean that there's a more variety between char characters, but in the end, I think in computer games the point buy system is better a character build system. Computer games are sort of built around a certain expectation of competency and the character power. Pen and paper versions where you actually have to roll these stats. It's the it might be more fun, and the dungeon master can change things to accommodate the, even absolutely terrible stats to some extent. Uh, I also don't like the random element fully because if you want to play a certain type of character you have to have at least probably certain stats has to be fairly high otherwise you can't if you want to play a muscly barbarian you can't have a strength that is crappy your character is ruined right from the start if you would have to do that so a point by system is it's faster and it allows you to more or less build the character you had in your mind when you started to make this the rerolling crap has it can go on for some time before you want anything in a half decent. You can switch things around. So I don't want to focus on this too much. We need physical attributes, dexterity, strength, uh, constitution. We still have 23 extra. We have want to have normal intelligence at least. Probably some charisma too and wisdom. Yeah, it's good enough for us. We don't particularly need these. So it would be silly to continue re-rolling when we have more or less everything we wanted anyway. And... Mm, I'll keep Wisdom and Intelligence no, at 9 and raise Charisma. Yeah, charisma might have an effect here or, here or there, so... I don't know if it does, but uh, I'm fairly certain intelligence and wisdom are not going to have too much of an impact. There are impact on other classes, but for a bounty hunter? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Skills. Different proficiency slots. Since we're a thief, we can only put a single point there. What it means is at the moment we will get negatives on any weapon, so we need to do something to at least to have, right? What we preferably would want is a um, long uh, uh, range weapon and a melee weapon. A short bow, yeah that's, that's just fine. And I don't. I'm not sure if there even is katanas in this game. The weapon system is from Baldur's Gate 2 too. Uh, in Baldur's Gate 1, it was something like large 
huge swords and small swords, and that's what's it. Here there are bastard sword, long sword, short sword, two handed sword, katana, scimitar, dagger. So it's spread up into much smaller pieces. I think a long sword is, would be a good choice. Long sword is one of the most common swords in the entire game, so it's, we're guaranteed to find something useful if we pick long sword. And the thief skills: pocket, open lock, find traps, move silently, set traps. Um, I'm going to focus on actual thieving abilities. Probably for our early, early on. What it means is we need to be able to open locks, find traps. Uh, I don't think there's any traps in the early game, so open locks is more important. The next couple of level ups will be dedicated solely on finding traps. Then, once we have open locks and find traps at something like 70, we can bump things to set traps until it's about 100. After that, we can do something else. Appearance may be a bit more darker. to see how this looks in, uh, in the game. It, you, it's probably you won't even notice it. It's the color of your small icon. So we're sort of greenish. We'll adjust it once we get to see what it looks like. Probably not a female voice. Death to you all! <laughs> As it should be. I must rest my eyes. Oh, such a waste of time. Your life ends here. <laughs> time for a bit of the rough and tumble. Onward! <laughs> Let's do this quick and painful. To battle with no regret. To battle and victory. To battle and victory! I will strive to lead response. Let's do this quick. I'll get the job. I'm no use to anyone time. I'm in this sitting around. I will go with this. And a name. Yeah, I didn't think about a name. I'm going to get stuck here. So we're going to be bound to counter Thule. Nestled atop the cliffs that rise from the Sword Coast, the Citadel of Candlekeep houses the finest and most comprehensive collection of writings on the face of Farron. It is an imposing fortress, kept in strict isolation from the intrigues that occasionally plague the rest of the Forgotten Realms. It is secluded, highly regimented, and it is home. Within these hallowed halls of knowledge, your story begins. You have spent most of your twenty years of life within this keep's austere walls under the tutelage of the sage Gorion. Acting as your father, he has raised you on a thousand tales of heroes and monsters, lovers and infidels, battles and tragedies. However, one story was always left untold, that of your true heritage. You have been told that you are an orphan, but your past is largely unknown. Lately, Gorion has been growing distant from you, as if some grave matter weighs heavily on his heart. You have asked about his concerns as gently as possible, but your queries have been in vain. Your sole comfort is the knowledge that he is a wise man, and you know he will tell you when the time is right. Nonetheless, his silence is troubling, and you cannot help but feel that something is terribly wrong. Today, Gorion has appeared more agitated than ever. And now he has uncharacteristically interrupted your chores in the middle of the day. Imparting hurried instructions for you to equip yourself for travel, 
He has handed you what gold he can spare, but given no clue as to why. Nevertheless, you now stand before the Candle Keep Inn, ready to purchase what you need for an unplanned and unexpected journey. Dun dun dun. Okay. This uh, instructions how to play the game. Yeah. We got a special snare and a no normal snare. I hope this is worth. This it. is more of a tutorial area in general. Yeah. Man with the bow. We have. Yeah. So it looks like. Looks like ass, but who cares? How much money do we have? Ninety gold. You can do a few. Yes, quests here. I'm not sure if I'll it's really you. worthwhile. My hotel's as clean as an elven arse. <laughs> well, hello there, young one. Come to visit your old pal, Winthrop, have ye? Well, don't forget the 5,000 gold piece book entrance fee. As per a candle keep custom, don't you know? You always were the big kidder, Winthrop. That gets funnier very nearly every time I hear it. Well, perhaps not quite so often. <laughs> Just having a bit of fun with ye, my friend. The monks may be walking about with poles in their endeavors, but you know you're always welcome here in my sight. Ryan did well by you, he did. So, is there anything I can do for ye? Some drinks, a room to sleep, or anything to buy? Sure, what do you have? Room costs 1, 3, 5, or 8 gold per night. I think it basically changes, it's a role playing thing, it basically changes how much you can recover by sleeping, meaning health. But there's no real difference between sleep, sleeping in peasant quarters versus royal. You will get, your abilities will always be restored. Uh, we didn't have a weapon, so what we want to buy is a short bow. I don't really care about the armor, we're going to be super bad at the start anyway. We need ammunition. Yeah, they're still sold in stacks of 120 at this point, and I think the stacks will stack. So, basically buying about 800 ammunition. And we have... Just enough money for a studded leather armor. But yeah. We have a stick and a bow. Okay, now we can see a little bit better. Yeah, I don't particularly care about our color choice. It's a minor thing, but... Could we get a little bit more green? Uh, I, I think the armor is basically tan colored mostly, so it, it just doesn't matter what we pick. So, yeah. Certain part, major parts of the armor are something that can change color to accommodate, so we might as well keep it. It's going to look tan no matter what we do. What? Let's see if we can do some thievery. Probably shouldn't be doing it here. I sort of like the idea of using a dagger more than using a stick. Very unthief like. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do these minor quests here. They don't. They're basically it's worthless. Bad. On the other hand, we only need 1250 points to get to our first level up. So even little gains would get us there faster. Sleeping man.
more sleeping sleeping good. So I, I do intend to steal from these if I can. The problem is it will we're gonna get caught with our wonderful zero sneaking ability. Um, Star Sapphire is probably most one of the most valuable gems you could have in the entire game. I know response from the police. Okay, we can do the lock picking without anyone reacting in any way. We just can't steal the stuff without anyone responding. Okay, what mo I'm going to do is basically. Get the loot and run. Someone has noticed new, you hear the guards being summoned. Ooh, potion clarity, that's an excellent potion. Prevents feeble mind, confusion, fear and charm. Last five turns. Uh, the system here, I, I don't know what it's basically ten rounds forms a single turn. So five turns is a fairly it'll easily last an entire battle from start to finish. Uh, the fights will happen in real time, but they're still uh, chopped up into rounds and turns. It's a duration of certain seconds, basically in each round. Yeah, it just follows the rules because I think rounds and turns are what the original pen and paper game uses. I should have joined the army. Watcher. Stealing within the sanctity of Candlekeep. This is blasphemy of the highest order. There's only one way to get you, that you can make this up. Give up all the gold you have upon your person so that it may be used to benefit the library. Up yours, your uppity, you uppity bold virgin. For some reason, he didn't like that. Silver necklace. Four pieces of gold. I'm there. Oh, that's bad. If it might. It's probably bad. Yeah, I was too me. sly for the guard. Go one way, then the other, and he was all confused. Didn't know what to do. That's how Master Thief operates. Ooh. Wanna buy some of my, my stolen loot? Oh, ooh, 1000 gold. This is a huge amount of gold for the start of the game. Absolutely massive. Uh, I'm not complaining. I can buy a proper sword. Or a long sword user. Yeah. Won't make much of a difference though. We're mainly going to rely on the bow anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ray Brass. Not a concern. I, I usually don't like starting a D and D game on the first level, because being on the first level sucks ass D and D. Also, it's a lot of game makers don't know how to make first level adventures. They think you have to do sh absolute shitty in there instead of interesting things. One of the coolest. Exceptions to that is probably that I, at least that I can think of right off the bat is uh, Icewind Dale 2. There, instead of hunting rats on the first level, you're you're basically defending a town from an or 
from a hostile army invading and, and you don't feel like the enemy is too weak or anything you get to fight against large group of enemies fireball throwing wizards and all that on your shitty first level characters I and it's certainly a challenge not in enough that it makes the game feel ultra difficult or something like that but it, it feels like you'll have to make good use of your first level characters still get to do interesting oh. things Okay, Shank. Oh, goody goody. I've gone and found ye first. You are the ward of Gorion, no doubt. I don't recognize you. Who are you and what are you doing here? Who I am is unimportant, but who you are is very much so. I apologize for this dirty bit of business, but I must seek your death. A pity, I know, but it would seem your head is worth an exceptional amount to me. I kill you myself, and I need not share credit with anyone. Okay. Murder. Something. Yes. And the police. I wonder what the police is gonna do. Yeah. You're your uppity bald version. Hater is gonna hate. We need to get out of here. Yeah, I'll see. Oh, I will Hard off. Fool! You cut yourself above the brow there. What is wrong, child? Something in your eyes tells me that something is very wrong indeed. Okay, we have an option to tell the truth or lie. Uh, I don't see any point in wrong lying. I haven't done anything wrong besides the sleeping bit. Oh, Parda, there was a man in there. He smelled like the stables, and he tried to kill me. It was horrible. Hurry then, child. Keep equip yourself at the inn and go join Gorion on the steps of the library. I had a sense something like this might happen. But didn't see me, me to tell me that. No, they're too fast for me. They're faster than me. Well, the guard isn't, but uh, Shank is. And no one's stopping this. The murder in broad daylight. No one cares. One point of damage. Excellent. You're a goddamn Robin Hood if you go. Ah. Ah. I, I just don't want to fight the guard. That's the. That's the thing. Ah, uh, more people chasing me. Our rules are very strict. Uh, he wants to treat, teach me how to do group combat. Um, I don't want to. I need to talk to a guard here. He, want, I want, he wants me to do a quest. Yep. This is the only quest I want to do here, and I don't particularly want to read through the text either. These are fetch and fetch quests. Basically, totally pointless for tutorial purposes. So, I'm going to try to move out of here into the actual game world as fast as possible. We do need to visit Bar Barracks. The reason I want to go there is not to do the little fetch quest, but because as a reward for that. Oh shit. Oh shit. Make room. Come on, just. Fine. The guard. 
I might die here. I haven't saved. Why was there a fucking guard in the way? Why did I go here? Why? Ah, it disappeared. Thank goodness. I'm willing. Yeah, I wanted the antidote bottle. It basically neutralizes the poison. The quest wants you to use it to heal a sick cow, but it's a waste of an antidote to use it on something like that. It's much better to it? use it in my back pocket. Uh, I don't think I want to kill the guard. Usually killing the guard has a huge reputation negative attached to it. And uh, reputation determines prices in shop, shop. so at this point, uh, as, and in this way, I, I don't want to ruin my reputation because I don't have any of this. These walls contain the world. Priest of Ogma. So, are you sick? You look rather healthy to me, but you never can tell. Do you need any potion or such things? Sure, a potion would be just fine. Alright, then take this potion. Uh, it's basically the potion. Lovely. Lovely indeed. Oh. Police are coming. Come on. I should have joined. Up yours, you uppity bald virgin. I think it's about time we leave this leave this yeah, place. I'll, see to it. I'll just return the sword quickly, the guard. The only yeah. guard who apparently uses a sword. Yeah, we gained 50 experience out of that. Uh, for in contrast, uh, probably the one of the shittiest animals you can kill will give 65 experience points. So you're basically getting nothing here. Hey, uh, it's me, Emoen. Mm, Emoen is our childhood friend. Uh, not sure I want to drag her along. She's, uh, I think she might be neutral good or something like that. We're gonna get into trouble with her anyway, and she's a thief, so it would be just another thief in the party. Anyway... I'm surprised that stuffy old Ryan let you away from your duties and chores. That old fiddlefowl, I snuck off too. Old Puffgut Winthrop was looking for me, and I've got all day to do his chores. You have time for a story today? Now I can tell you, John. What have you been up to? Yep. I'm afraid I cannot chat today, little one. My foster father wishes me to part to take, we will prepare for a journey, but will not say it where. Little one, I'm not much younger than you, though are you sure got toll pass? Relatively, anyway. A journey, eh? Never get to travel. Wish I could go with you. Yeah, I really wish I could. Yes, sir. Really do. There's no way you can come. The riot would never allow it. Oh, I know. All stick in the mark that he is. All worried about nothing, I'm sure. Better go now, cause you got a long ways to travel. Now. Not that I would know, especially since I didn't peek at all Mr. D's private letters. Now, sir, better go now. Bye bye. Uh, Ryan, I think we should leave this beat like right now. It's the music louder, I'm imagining it. I don't think it's very loud. It's probably just because it's been blazing in the background for so long. Oh, my child, I am glad I have found you. Yeah, let's go. This is very unnerving, I know, but you must trust me. It is very important that you pack your possessions so that we may leave Candlekeep immediately. Hurry, for there is no time to tarry. 
The keep is well protected but not vulnerable. Yep, I'm ready to go. friends and you can trust them he said seek the friendly arm in find Khalid and Jahira they're his friends let's hurry child the night can only get worse so we must find shelter soon don't worry I will explain everything as soon as there is time wait there is something wrong we are in an ambush prepare yourself you are perceptive for an old man you know why I'm here. Hand over your ward and no one will be hurt. If you resist, it shall be a waste of your life. You're a fool if you believe I would trust your benevolence. Step aside and you and your lackeys will be unhurt. I'm sorry that you feel that way, old man. In cactus. In cactus. Ah. Run, child. Get out of here. Ah. The dawn is especially cruel this morning. You awake with the realization that you have not been living some horrible dream. Ambushed. You saw Gorion cut down before your eyes, and even his powerful magic could not stop the onslaught. It was his wish that you flee, but that does not remove the feeling of helplessness that now overwhelms you. Hand over your ward, the armored fiend had said. He was after you and you alone, but why? If only Gorion had given some clue. But now you are alone and lost. Candlekeep is near, but you will find no quarter there. The readers pay for their serenity with rather draconian entry rules, and without Gorion's influence, their doors will remain closed. You will not last long on your own with your meager equipment. Perhaps you can get some help from the friends Gorion mentioned, the ones at the Friendly Arm. Yeah, perhaps I will. Um... This reminds me of one aspect of the game I haven't really talked about, and it's how to deal with when things go belly up, when we start losing characters. If I die, it's automatic game over, so I have to load. That's not a, it's not a problem. Question is, what are we gonna do with companions that we lose? There's two ways to lose them: simply by having them die, so their portraits gets grayed out and you can resurrect them all their entire bodies get annihilated and there's nothing to resurrect the character is gone for good um, and I'm leaning towards rolling with it so whatever happens happens uh, it sort of prevents you from being uh, uh, totally reckless, but on the some at some point the enemy can do. We're playing the game at core difficulty, which means the enemies can do exactly the same things that we are: critical strikes and all that. So sooner or later, there's a great chance that shit will hit the fan. And yeah, overall, I'm thinking of rolling with it. There might be some exceptions, uh, but the guiding principle is just, we'll try to make do. Hey, uh, it's me, Imoen! Um, I, I don't know if I want to give the Imoen the boot just yet. Problem is, a first level thief is not exactly capable of doing much on its own. So, do I want to give Emo and the boots? Uh, but we'll keep Emo in for the moment. 
Sorry I followed ya, but I never get out of candle keep, and those monks are such a bore. Never any decent coin in their pockets neither. I I saw Gorion. I am so sorry. I kinda of figured something bad might happen to you out here. How could you have known? Gorion did not even tell me. I uh accidentally Accidentally read a letter on his desk the other day. Can't remember exactly what it said, but he might still have. It might be on it, his body. Anyway, I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna let you wander around here all alone. Never let a friend down, no sir. Stick with you until you say otherwise. I will. Yeah, I, Give me some direction. What do you have? Fusion potions, a speed potion, a wand of magic missiles. And that's it. We're gonna split the arrows a little bit. A short bow. We could keep Iman in the sense that we could just dual class her. It's a system of multi-classing, but multi-classing here me in this game means you have two classes that progress uh, at the same time, yeah, ha dividing the experience gains between the classes. Dual classing is a bit of a different system. It basically freezes your original class and starts a new class from zero. There's a there's a very weird oddity on that it, where in this game that makes no logical sense and that is that you can only gain access re-access the original class abilities once the new class is one level higher than the class that you left originally had it it, it makes no it, it's absolutely idiotic if you think about it even for a second but that's how it works it, it's there to encourage i guess that the longer you played a single class, you're less likely to try to dual class it. At some point, you might, if you dual class it, you might never be able to have a chance to reach the a higher level anyway. So you're basically boned. You'll never. You're you're just a shitty low low level class of something else. It's a terrible system, but. That it is what it is. Orion Tar died some, somewhere there, and he's supposed to have a message on his body. So I want to get that, read that, and uh, I think we'll end there. Tutorial character creation and tutorial part is now over. It's the real, the deal, and. At first level, it's very unforgiving. Anything can basically be lethal to us. A single hit from almost anything so it could, can kill us, even at full health. So, not a huge fan of D&D at first level, not at least this version. You're a queer fellow. Is that... Gorion? Yes, he died saving me from some... thing. Don't you even know what attacked you? Whatever it was, looks like it was vicious. I was scared out of my wits, what do you expect? Really? I'm glad I wasn't right here. I've seen you get surprised and jump before, but never ever, ever afraid. I, I don't even want to think about what could scare you. Mm, so, Gorion Scroll. My friend Gorion, please forgive the abruptness which you... 
I am now right. But time is short and there is much to be done. What we have long feared may soon come to pass, though not in the manner foretold, and certainly not in the proper time frame. As we both know, forecasting these events has proved increasingly difficult, leaving little option other than a leap of faith. We have done what we can for those in thy care, but the time nears when we must step back and let matters take, the, take what course they will. We have perhaps been a touch too sheltering to this point. Despite my desire to remain neutral in this matter, I could not in good conscience let events proceed without some measure of warning. The other side will move very soon, and I urge thee to leave Candlekeep this very night, if possible. The darkness may seem equally threatening, but a moving target is much harder to hit, regardless of how sparse the cover. A fighting chance is all that I that can be asked for at this point. Should anything go awry, awry, do not hesitate to seek aid from travelers on, along the way. I do not need to remind thee that it is a dangerous land, even without our current concerns, and a party is stronger than an, an, an individual in all respects. Should additional assistance be required, I understand that Jahira and Khalid are currently at the friendly arm in. They know little of what has passed, but they are ever thy friends, and will no doubt help whoever they can, however they can. Luck be with us all. I'm getting too old for this, signed he. Um, party is stronger in all respects than an individual. Uh, that's not true. Individuals can be, you can concern, when you have a lot of guys, the protections have to be spread about and you don't have good protection for everyone. If you have a very small group or a single guy, you can dump all on the one guy to get exceptional buffs going on your side. So it doesn't actually work that way. It depends on the situations. If you need someone to just pummel the other side to submission, then more guys is better. But things are certainly doable in a small group or solo. And I think we'll end here. So, two thieves out in the big world. Bows. We have a few options, but it certainly looks like Boulder Skate, gigantic city. Olga's Beard, another city. Its uh, expansion pack has added that. It means that you want to have fairly good combat ability in for your characters and a few classes or uh, level ups before you even want to attempt that. Friendly Arm Inn looks like this probably are or Beregas. Those are the places we want to go to. City of Nashville, a carnival and a mine. And that appears to be it. Naturally, there are other sides, but I uh, will have to learn about them first, I guess.